I'm here with my man Lonnie Fish from the Liberty Law team in Philadelphia. He came out to Chicago here to spend the day with us, um, talk shop, learn a little bit here about uh, how we defend these people. So tell me <laughs> about your practice, Lonnie. Well, so we mainly do criminal defense. We tend to end, end up representing people on the more serious matters. We do more violent matters and matters where people are looking at a lot of jail time. But we do, like I said, do the, a lot of the homicides and DUIs and things of that nature. And this is uh, your first year on the job, right? No, I've been at it. It's my 19th year. So I was barred in 2005. And day one, I opened up my law firm. So I've been pretty much running from then. Really? So on day one, yeah. you opened your own, hung your own shingle, yeah, as they yeah, say? Yeah. So that's what, all the lawyers always like. They get shocked at this. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting, I was 23 years old, too. Good so, for you. yeah. So that, that was the interesting part. So, yeah, day one, I worked for the public defender in my third year of law school. Um, I was working for attorneys all the way through undergrad, took the year off as a 1L because they had to, and through college. Day one, I put a little ad like this big in the Metro newspaper, and that's how I would get my first clients. Yeah, really. So, yeah. do you remember your your first case or one of your first? Cases? Yeah, no. Like, like my first case, was somebody like shot somebody in the face point blank with a shotgun. One of my first few cases. Jeez, yeah. really? So just dive right, in, right there, in there, huh? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Actually, actually, the guy did five to ten years, and I represented his brother a few times. I represented him a few times. I I talked to him a couple months ago. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah it's, you you do tend to see the same people in this business, huh? <laughs> Um, that's crazy. That's a wild story. Good for you. And now 19 years later, um, you know, you're still running around uh, all of Philly. Help me understand sort of so the geographical area. Philly's a lot like Chicago. There's the, the main, you know, city part and the surrounding counties, except for we don't do New Jersey, which is right across the river. But, you know, northern county is uh, Bucks County. Western is Montgomery, Delaware. Southern is Chester County. So it's similar to us here. Gotcha. Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so had, did you like just want to do criminal defense from day one or, or how did that work? So I don't think I was really conceptualizing why. I just knew I wanted to be in court every day to start. So my options were family law and then criminal law. And who wants to do family law? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, yeah. it's like oh, my kid, you know, 10 minutes late and this, that. Right. So, but, you know, my love for this practice has kind of uh, changed over the years. And I still love what I do. Um, but, you know, the need to go to court, I, I've scratched that itch because I've been in court pretty much every day for 19 years. So I, I don't doesn't really excite me just going to court. The other things about the job excite me. Yeah, like like building a law practice. Yeah, that and, you know, I, I do believe I help people too. Yeah, absolutely, right? I mean, there is, uh, there is something to be said about, you know, building a firm that is sustainable, that, do, that consistently does things the right way. Um, you know, sure, you, you think of it from a selfish standpoint, like I have a bigger, better business, but also you wind up helping more people that way, don't you? Right. And, and that was actually why I came here. Um, you, you let me talk about myself. I'll talk about you a little bit. Is that, you know, truly looking inside this law firm and how the hot dog is made, so to speak, is there's a lot of emphasis on the quality of work that you're getting because you can call an attorney for the same type of situation, you know some sort of uh, very serious traffic matter and one lawyer you know your competitors may just show up to court and the other lawyer may actually care about the result the client gets make sure that the lawyer is up to date on the law the lawyer is preparing make sure the clients communicated with um, make sure the clients educated and that is kind of what I've been gearing to trying to get to where you're at in that and in the quality of the work to make sure that we're up to date and, and that we're up on our quality like you are in that will make our us grow just because we're giving out that quality uh, product. I, I appreciate that. And, and based on, the, you know, hanging out with you today, it seems like you're already there. So, um, yeah, that's, it is the name of the game at, at the end of the day, right, is um, providing a good legal service but also a good client service too. I mean, people these days do expect you to communicate with them the right way, be proactive, get an answers when they have questions, be there for them, communicate and text messages and all the things that people do these days. So, I mean, that's, that's the way of the world. Yeah. I mean, and people work hard, they pay you money, they expect, you know, and then they deserve it. A absolutely. So uh, let's, I got this question that I like to ask all criminal defense attorneys and, and the short question is like, 
how do you defend those people, right? <laughs> like, you know they're guilty, I guess. Um, so how can you possibly try to help someone who did it? Okay, well, here's what I'm going to tell you. And you, I know before we were talking about how everybody kind of gives the same answer. I'm not going to give you the same answer. The time to hire me is when you are guilty. That's the time to hire me. Some of these cases, they win themselves. You know, it doesn't look like the guy in the video. Hey, you know, right. it's when the person is guilty, when it's like I make the biggest difference. And the best example I give you is I, I have a client and we'll talk about dumb things clients do, you know, just recently. So, for example, is that he got into a shootout with somebody that was about, you know, 48 shots in one direction and things of that long, along those lines. But this particular individual, he was 20 years old. He turns 21 in April. And he was checked every single box for childhood trauma that I've ever seen in my life. I, you name it. And, and some of the most disgusting things that happened to him, like his brothers would tattoo him to practice. Like some of the nastiest things. His mother died in front of him, literally in the bed with him. Like, and some of the saddest things that get that person to where he, he got to. So for me, it was being able to figure out and explain to a judge what to do with this person because they are guilty. And that's actually where I'm getting my joy now. Um, the most that I've found most rewarding lately is, hey, when you are guilty, this is where we're making these differences. And I, I even like in your practice, I see it is that you guys put, I'm not going to give all the secrets away to your competitors. You know, they should, okay. they, they, you know, but you know, you have a specific person that's sending like, mitigating factors to to the district attorney or to the government in advance and what that does is it it number one it tells the story as to why your client deserves this break and a lot of lawyers just show up to court after you pay them mm -hmm. right and and it's they just show up that day you know that's not what you do that's not what i do right. so the, the answer is when you are guilty that's when you hire the lawyer and when you're not guilty too right yeah exactly i mean th there is that sort of Assumption, and I, I see it on the internet. You see it from, you know, your family member at the Thanksgiving table or whatever. They're like, you, you know, that person's guilty. You know, that person's guilty. Sure, that, that I just say the, they didn't do it though. Right, you know, that those cases <laughs> do exist, but a lot of times, I'm sure you have. Pe we do. People walk in and say like, they got something wrong here. Like that, yeah. they, either it wasn't me or it didn't really go down like that, right? And, yeah. and you know, you truly once you hear one side of the story you really don't know what happened yeah no then that happens too you get your you know your fun not guilty verdicts and sure. and all that type of stuff and there is to a certain degree i'm not the decision maker is what when i do get deep into that conversation um as to like oh how are you representing it hey, it's not my decision it's the jurors it's the judges that that's kind of i'm just painting the picture all i'm doing is working hard so the government, if they have somebody working hard on their side, the right thing happens. They certainly do, right? There, there's a good dichotomy there between people who are like, yeah, you know, we're going to trial on this one, right? There's an issue with the case or they didn't, whether it's, you know, an ID issue, they didn't do it, some problem with the case. But then, yeah, there's also these other ones where like, hey, you're not, we're not putting this case in front of a jury, right? Yeah. Like we got to figure out another solution and, um, you're right. I hadn't thought of it like that, but that's sometimes where the biggest difference can be made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, I like that. See, you're right. You didn't have the, the standard answer. It's a good, uh, good, it's a good I'm answer. not the standard dude. There you go. I love it. But you do have some interesting stories, I imagine. Um, so let's start there. I, I will tell you, in our practice, we've seen a couple cases recently where people are like, Self snitching is what we've been yeah. call, calling it. You know, people film themselves committing a crime, right? And then post it on, you know, social media or whatever. Uh, you have anything like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not going to name names because we have all confidentiality, but, you know, in a shootout, don't put on Instagram like mocking citizens app. Um, the worst is when they're in the jail calls. You yes. know, clients, those, those jail calls are being recorded. I swear they are. <laughs> yes, Trust they me. really are. <laughs> Yo, uh, I every time I get a case like a week before, the DA comes to me sometimes and they smile and they give me a CD. Who uses CDs? They do. Yeah, that yeah. sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but they give a big smile. I'm like, oh, what did he or she say? Yeah. It's like one of those things. So those are the worst. Also, um, 
social media is a huge thing. I actually tend to see one thing that's on social media and I'm not trying to give anybody tips, but I'll always see like the crime was committed and then we look back at this person's social media and they're wearing the same exact clothes four months ago. Like that's a really common thing that you see now. So uh, I'm not get, teaching people how to commit sure. crimes, but yeah, there's a lot of self snitching. Even if you're not self snitching, it's, you know, whatever you put out there is out there. All right, so I mean, my understanding is that you are the guy to go to in Philly. I mean, you've had some high-profile cases. Right? Yeah, we we've handled some newsworthy cases. A um, any you can talk about? Yeah. Um, well, right now I have one pending. Maybe by the time you, you know this video <laughs> gets watched, it won't be pending. That's how we like YouTube. But I am representing a 14-year-old girl who threw a traffic cone at at a at a man um, at 2 a.m. and he died. And there was actually a group of children out at 2 a.m. So right now we're fighting to have uh, this juvenile who's been charged as an adult for murder uh, in the juvenile system. So that's one. I have in the past represented a lot of juveniles charged with murder. Actually, I had a similar case almost 13 years ago where a bunch of kids in the subway beat up a guy. He died, and it was a similar situation. They were charged as an adult trying to get in the juvenile court. Uh, very recently, we represented a woman who was... Wait, uh, let's, can we talk oh, about oh, the yeah, juvenile yeah. for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So... Is that one of those situations, and I'm not trying to get into this particular case too much, you know, for confidentiality purposes, but is this one where, you know, you hear cases about a bar fight, right, where one guy just tries to punch another guy and boom, it hits him wrong or the guy hits the floor and, and you know, yeah. tragedy happens, right? Um, is that kind of the circumstance here? It's, it is. It's caught on video, but it wasn't like she was over top of him, sure, bludgeoning sure. him. It was a... I think it was thrown at him once by her and once by somebody else and and it hit him in the back he fell forward and yeah and died it was very tragic yeah you know, that it's is. tragic all around yeah and, and tragic you know at least the way i see it is 14 year old charged with murder right yeah. i mean it's tough yeah so that is the youngest that i've had charged with murder um and it's tough and you know the the public outcry is like you know where, why is this girl out at 2 a.m.? You know, where are her parents? You know, this is a terrible, and it's definitely a terrible and tragic situation, but she has such a whole, li you know, whole life ahead of her. And, you know, to get to the point where she was at it was also quite tragic. You know, she, she yep. has um, a, a big backstory as well. Yep, yep, most, most time there is. Um, and then, sorry, I cut you off because you were, you were going to tell me about another case. I want Yeah, I mean, I, for some reason, the, the juveniles that get charged with murder do end up making news, but I had a similar case about 13 years ago um, where a juvenile, a, a group of teens, they beat up a guy in the subway and he died. And I actually got my client sent to the juvenile system. And like three days before his trial, he, I got him out on bail. He shot somebody right before his trial. And uh, then I'd that say that's a violation things. of his bail bond. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's in jail now for that shooting. Sure. Although we did well in the murder trial. Right. Um, I represented a woman who allegedly poisoned her daughter she was quadriplegic with cerebral palsy the daughter she, was the daughter was she was she 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 made it to like a, a magnificent age and when she died they found the alcohol and a bunch of pills in her system and they just uh, assumed the mom did it and uh that that jury came back i think it was like seven minutes not guilty like and they were wow. apologizing to the mom and everything that was that was a quick one wow um but yeah we've we've had some some good fortune of you know helping some people and some good publicity over it too yeah, yeah. Uh, now, tell, let's talk about publicity cases generally. You know, in some sense, uh, they're obviously harder, right? In some sense, they're they're maybe easier too. Tell tell me about that. What is your preference or, or your approach on a, pub, uh, a case that has high publicity? Well, so I've actually had a district attorney admit to a judge that they treat cases differently when they're high publicity. Yeah. I had a bail motion uh, for a case. Um, and the judge said, and the DA said, judge, this is a media case. And I said, what does it matter if it's a media case? But you gotta keep in mind, the judge doesn't wanna be on the front page as lowering the bail of this person. And I, most judges, if not all of them that I know personally, don't take that into effect. But I know the district attorneys, they, they have to act differently. I've had them say it on the record, which is sad. Um, and it shouldn't be that way because what catches the ire of the news is literally just like a, a visual uh, the case that I told you earlier about the girl, you know, the 14 year old girl who threw a traffic cone. The only reason that's caught the eye of the news. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's caught on video and it's disturbing yeah. visually. But, you know, they wouldn't care about this 14 year old girl out on the street. Or two, right. They wouldn't care about her. Right. So to me, it's just 
you know sensationalism Correct. sensationalism right i mean Correct. yeah and the other part of that is just because it's a high profile case now doesn't mean it will be in the future right obviously you turn on the news and these things turn over more yeah. issues happen right yeah. and so you know to be perceived to be treated unfairly in the moment yes yeah, is, is you want to be a fly in the wall when when you're talking about criminal justice system that's why i told my clients you want to be a fly in the wall you don't want to, the judge to know who you are you don't want the judge to remember your name you don't want the judge to you know none of that stuff fly on the wall absolutely i always know there's going to be an issue when you walk into court you talk to the prosecutor da whatever and you say i'm here on smith and they go oh you're the one on smith like, god darn it what happened? What's gonna? What what went on with Smith? That I mean, I don't know it, about, it could be right? something as simple as like not. I've had judges yell at people for not standing up when the judge comes sure. out, not taking off their hat. Just that simple. Like, and you'll go to jail. It's crazy. Yeah, it, it Take is. Take off your hat and stand up when the judge comes out. Easy. Lonnie, thanks for coming out, man. Um, I appreciate it. I actually learned a whole lot, not only about you know how things operate where you are, but. Criminal defense, criminal law in general, man. I appreciate it. And thanks for having us. And I'll try not to get some of this pizza on your microphone. <laughs> no worries, man. This is Lonnie's first time having a Chicago deep dish pizza. I went with Giordano's, but you can let me know down in the comments if uh, I chose the wrong pizza place for it.